At the moment, people don't necessarily walk to the fridge in the retail store to find a red wine. They look on the shelves and they're used to drinking a red wine with their steak or a cold winter night in front of the fire. We've got a job to do in kind of changing people's perceptions of red wine and educating them that whenever you would normally reach for a rosé or a craft beer or a seltzer, that there's a red wine there that will give you an amazing taste profile but also really fit into that occasion. You can't sit in a business like wine, which is pretty much like fashion. You can't sit there and wait for the next 20 years to come around and to be doing something new again. You have to always be innovating and, and changing. If you sit and wait, you die. As a generation four of a company called Brown Brothers, we're actually led by eight women and two men in our generation. I think as a woman working in the wine industry, we can only be proud of the steps that we've made forward. Every time I get the next step done, we get closer to getting this wine in tank, blended, and essentially to a bottle. Certainly not the end of the road in terms of being a stressed winemaker. Challenges like this come up once in a generation. At a $20 proposition, I would find this not premium enough. Certainly not as fresh for second one. With the feedback given today, um, we've got to make some really fundamental changes. You could look at a winemaker being like an artist. It's like putting your art on show and waiting for the critics to come through, and you guys are the critics. I expected more colour from the pressings. I'm going to start off with wine one, the uh, 2022 Tarango. If this wine doesn't turn out the way we were hoping it was going to, and it ends up getting rejected by the retailer, it's going to come back to me. So the pressure's on.